We want to welcome all of our families uh, far and wide here from Scioto County. Um, and as we, as we come together this evening to talk about, uh, begin the discussion uh, about what is taking place here in Scioto County uh, with our parishes, with the Catholic community uh, across the board. Uh, so we thank you. We thank all of those who are joining us live stream uh, this evening on our various live streaming outlets. Uh, and so let us begin this evening with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we thank you for gathering us here this evening. We ask that under the mantle of our Blessed Mother, we will be reminded of the many gifts that you have given us, especially the gift of our families and the gift of community. We ask you to bless this evening, to keep us mindful of the direction that you are leading us, because we place this all into your beautiful hands, your hands which have been pierced for us, your heart pierced for us, your heart which pours out its blood, its life. In the sacramental life of the church, we ask you, Lord, to give us the strength to be able to see all things new, which are, you are doing with the Catholic community of Scioto County. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So this evening, um, we welcome Bishop Brennan, uh, our shepherd, our pastor uh, of the Diocese of Columbus. Uh, as we begin this conversation, uh, certainly we have experienced uh, many things in our county um, over the past month between uh, letters and last masses. And uh, so this evening, uh, this gives us an opportunity to begin the conversation that has begun so long ago um, with, uh, with, with Bishop Campbell uh, and now with uh, Bishop Brennan. Uh, and so we're going to give him an opportunity uh, to speak about uh, his vision uh, for our community, uh, for certainly he is uh, the guiding light uh, for all of us here uh, as he helps us to hear the voice of Jesus uh, as our Lord continues to lead us here in faith and lead the community um, in this new direction. Uh, so this evening we welcome uh, Bishop Brennan and I invite you uh, to the podium. Uh, also, as Bishop is making his way here, um, we will give an opportunity for Bishop uh, to be able to speak to us. Uh, there will be an opportunity for a few v uh, brief questions um, at the end uh, this evening. Um, and then the transition team will continue on uh, with its work uh, here uh, and being called to represent um, the various uh, facets of, of Scioto County uh, and our various, par uh, various parish communities. So again, thank you for being here. Uh, and again, Bishop Brennan. Thank, thank you, one and all, and thanks for coming out on a night like this and being our chance to be together. Really, it is something of a continuation of a long conversation that will continue on. So Father Joe mentioned that um, Bishop Campbell had been down and some of these discussions have been underway and parishes have been working together. And we come to what was somewhat anticipated, a next step in this process We'll be doing some of these reflections really across the diocese over the months to come. We'll be doing some long-term planning and we recognize everywhere in the diocese that there are places where there is a tremendous growth and a need and we have to respond to that. There are places where there are population shifts, we have to respond to that. And we have to look at the resources we have, human and financial and uh, buildings and make some prudential decisions, but it's all with one direction. It's all looking forward. The idea is to look ahead and to consider how does the church respond to the needs in the diocese, not just here, but I'll come be specific here. How does the church respond to the needs of the diocese here in the year 2020? So much of our diocese was designed with different assumptions and um, different models and different setups. 
So Scioto County is a good example. And one of the questions we have to ask is, what are the needs of Scioto County today? And then how do we bring the joy of the gospel and set it on fire with love here in Southern Ohio, here in Scioto County? Already you've done some great things. Last year I was here for the family festival, which followed the year of the family, where you work together as a community to, to focus on your own family, but also this family of families. The other thing we look at are um, the questions about how do we use our time and our energy best so that we can focus on those needs. What needs to grow? What needs to be new? What needs to take place here? There, these are some of the conversations that the transition team will be having with Father Joe and that they'll be having with you. So people on the transition team will be working this. This is an ongoing conversation. We're really at the beginning of this new phase. So we're at a step in a conversation that's long going on, but we're at the beginning of a new phase. And so while it's good that we have an exchange today, it's not going to be filled with lots of answers because the work is yet to be done. The conversations are yet to be had. This is really um, opening this phase. So your transition team, people are here as well, and they're all listening, and so these will continue to go on. One of the things I think, the, you, many of you have a paper that was handed out as you came in that reflects some, a, a snapshot, and I really stress it's a snapshot of some of the data that we have. Now, in some rows you may see all zeros, or you may see um, a dash, that may mean that we don't have the data in. So this only reflects what's been turned in. So there may be some, um, there, may, there may be some instances where, uh, for example, all zeros under marriages in 2018. If you were married in 2018, I'm sorry. You, you really were married. I'm sorry we didn't get it down. But the, the, we, this is a meant to be a snapshot. But as you look at the numbers, you see that in all of the county in 2018, the October count for Mass was 969. And quite honestly, about three quarters of it was in three churches. So these are the, the numbers. These are the realities. Now, that doesn't mean that other places get ignored. It just means we have to say, how can we do this efficiently and how can we be present to people in the best way possible? And then, like I said, what are the newer needs that we need to identify so that we can respond to those? So with that in mind, I think maybe, do you want to take us through the question part? To the discussion. Now, Father Joe has a microphone, right? Or do you not? Right. I will have a microphone here uh, on the side uh, of the bleachers. Uh, we invite you to please come and make your way over there. We don't have another wireless mic, uh, but if you would like to ask a question, I'll be holding the mic uh, over here um, and uh, next to Gloria. Uh, and if you'd like to, to ask the bishop a question or a bishop or a question about the transition, uh, we invite you to come. Uh, to do so at this time. And I would just note that this is being live streamed, so it's important if you would to use the microphone so that it can be picked up or else somehow or another that I, that I can repeat it, somehow or another that people who are watching this through the live streaming can take part. There is one question that's coming in uh, via live stream. Uh, certainly, Bishop Brennan and other dioceses such as Pittsburgh, um, under Bishop Zubik and other uh, parishioners uh, have parishioners and live stream committees on the diocesan level uh, and the cluster level to assist uh, parish closure and realignments. Uh, is the same being done here uh, diocesan wide? Will we be doing the same uh, data with uh, both clergy uh, and lay people? Uh, so first, my answer is certainly 
This is really, a, there, there are two things going on at the same time. And th this question is a good way for me to be able to address it. I reference the fact that we're beginning a, pre um, a planning process in the Diocese of Columbus. And that is really just getting underway. Right now, we started in October with the priest convocation where the, the data was all presented to the priest where we had a chance to reflect on that together. And then the priest met in deaneries, again, to look at that data, really. And sometimes to see how they can complement each other and help one another out. The diocese just engaged through the foundation, thanks to the foundation, a firm called Catholic Leadership Institute. And that is, they are a team who help really to bring about these conversations on the local level. And so yes, there will be a team that as we move there to the next phase and start to study it and, and come up with strategies and again priorities, there will be. We do have a diocesan pastoral council. The diocesan pastoral council meets four to six times a year. It's just about every other month, I think, maybe with a break here or there. Um, that, well, th that team is already in place and they're just getting into this question. So they were introduced to some of this. That will be expanded over time. So there is a diocesan process underway and indeed the answer to the question is yes. Now, simultaneously, there are conversations happening in certain parts of the diocese that, like I said, were already underway. And we want to respect that process. I think one of the worst things we could do is just keep dragging it on and on and on and on. And that was some of the feedback that I had gotten this way, is that it's kind of been dragging on. And so we didn't want to say, let's pause everything. It already got paused somewhat because of my coming here last year. And so we're continuing that conversation right here and right now. And so, like Father Joe said, that team is taking place locally. A lot of these decisions will be done locally here, and that team will be working. It consists of, of course, your parish priest, but also of uh, um, representatives from each parish. And they, in turn, will be working with the larger um, field of people. Okay. The answer is I don't know. The answer is I don't know. That's part of all this conversation. And that's where your input is, is important. Now, obviously, many different people will come up with many different opinions, and eventually we'll have to make some decisions, but it'll be based on those conversations and, and on um, the priorities that are set. I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know how we would be able to maintain seven campuses. I think, the, the, again, the numbers show the realities and the challenges there. Some of those might, again, serve new purposes right here within the uh, Catholic community. Um, some of those might provide a place for something like senior living, for Catholic senior living. So again, as we name the priorities, we'll be looking also at how the um, facilities fit those priorities. We, but, but to main, I don't think we can maintain seven campuses, but we could do other things, Catholic things, in those places. Um, 
There are canonical processes, and part of, by the way, the canonical process is that there be local conversation. So these, like I said, I'm here as a sort of a transition point today to help the transition team to pick up the ball and run with it. But these are questions that you're going to be grappling with, and I'll certainly want to listen to that, and even perhaps at times be able to participate. Good question. The question was, what will happen with the facilities that, um, that are in each of the different parishes? Father Joe, behind you. I think the responsibility does fall to me in the end, but I promise you I'll be working with the transition team and listening very, very carefully. Father Joe, I think there's a question right behind you. The question has to do with mass times. Are they carved in stone? And then you spoke very specifically about the sharing of the times with St. Peter's. The answer, and I'm going to let you uh, jump in, Father Joe, because I don't want to say this incorrectly, but the answer is no, they're not carved in stone. We have to begin with something. And we have to begin with um, what appears to be prudent and fits the patterns as best as possible. However, that too is part of the consideration that will be part of this ongoing dialogue. Yes, correct. So we'll be, we'll be working with the transition team. Uh, the last times that we fell into were a transition uh, were, were already being used uh, in the community uh, to support uh, the, uh, really the numbers uh, of people that we serve uh, on a regular basis. These are very good questions in the sense that they, they are exactly raising the topics that you will be dealing with as a community that the transition team will pick up but also share with all of you.
Seton Housing is one of the works that we do in our Catholic social services and in our, uh, our well actually our housing board. It's right now it's becoming more associated with Catholic social services. But I don't have the exact number. We have a number of Seton Houses around the diocese in the city of Columbus and in various places. One that comes to mind is um, Lancaster. I think there are 14. Is it 14 of them? And it provides for affordable housing for seniors and, uh, and it has that Catholic ethos to it. And so one of the things that we try to do in a community is respond to the needs of that local community. And so people who from very often from that area seem to want to find housing maybe downsize from a house into an apartment or maybe really just to have something that is suitable and dignified and respectable so to provide it at a reasonable cost and so we have that we in many dioceses work with HUD on these kinds of projects all around the country I in um, Rockville Center where I come from we had a number of units of, seat, of uh, senior housing. That's one of the possibilities being considered. And um, <clears throat> one of the parish properties might be very appropriate for that. Um, but that goes back to the earlier topic that I raised of identifying what are the current needs. Now, we may be way off base on that as we start talking to people in the transition team. I don't think so, but as, as the tr transition team con conducts these conversations, we'll know, you'll know, we'll know. These are the things we want to say. What Identify where the needs are. Identify how we can respond to it. Before you take one online, I think somebody was right behind you too who had a question. I'll let Father Joe answer the question, but I first will say something about BAA and about the parishes itself. Um, so the question had to do, if I, I might just, from, coming from St. Monica's, the, the designation, if you will, of the, um, of the parish for which you give your bishop's annual appeal gift. Um, right now, we haven't actually closed anything. We've identified, things that, the numbers that, that, that um, seem to paint a certain picture and I, I don't, I, we're following the numbers and, but these are conversations that will continue to happen. The Bishop's Appeal formula for this year is based on the parishes as the parishes are. Now the overage in each parish um, I don't know, that's what, that is a local decision, and that's what I'll pass on to Father Joe. But right now, we haven't actually closed anything. 
Um, so, so things, the, the classifications remain the same. Right, exactly. So that's, that's why that letter came out the way it, it did, um, was that uh, with the vision taken with the with the parish not being closed uh, officially, we will still need to continue uh, the upkeep of the buildings until uh, the next steps of this, of this take place. Uh, so the building remains open as, as such, um, even though there are no public masses, the same way our Lady of Lords and our Lady of Sorrows. So that's why the letter was written the way it was. It was the way it was suggested to be written uh, by the bishops and the local office for this time. But obviously, the transfer of your membership, uh, when you give to the bishops and the local your money follows you. Um, question uh, for uh, from, from some of our viewers at home. Uh, bishop, if you could talk uh, about plans for increase in vocations uh, and to evangelize our, our local communities. What, are, what, are, what is your vision for promoting vocations and evangelization? Oh, thank you for that question. The question is, what are the plans for promoting vocations and evangelizations? Well, first of all, I do want to say thank you to the Scioto Counter area. Father Kyle Tennant is with us right here tonight. So Southern Ohio is, be, is indeed producing vocations, and we're so glad, and Father Kyle Tennant, I'm so glad you're with us tonight. Um, I'll, I'll come back to vocations in a minute. You hit the nail on the head by asking about evangelization. Because to me, that's the priority that we need to focus on. And, it's, and I think we have to find new ways to do that. And I mean, I have tons of ideas, but I don't have necessarily tons of plans. So, you know, I think in, in some parts of the diocese, religious, a religious community might be um, a possibility. To, and I'm, I'm looking at the, the possibilities here. When you look at the Shawnee College, when you do look at the young families and following up on the PSR, that kind of goes to my question earlier about do we put energies into maintaining buildings and campuses and things like that? Or do we put our energies into the out in the field kind of work? Doing new things, trying to do exciting things. I've gotten to meet over the course of the past year, being here a few times, um, some very good, very generous, and very talented people who are on fire with that sense of evangelization. No, I wasn't talking about the cooking show, Joe. <laughs> no fires over there, no fires. But the fact of the matter is, that's the kind of thinking I'm hoping diocesan-wide we can get behind. We have a lot of movements in the diocese, um, ind individual movements, not diocesan movements. But uh, we have lots of movements in the diocese where <coughs> young people see themselves as missionaries. I'm thinking, for example, of, I know it's way up north, but the Catholic Youth Summer Camp. That's not a diocesan program, but I'm so impressed by those young people. And the young people who, who staff on that, they see themselves as missionaries. I see it in some of the colleges, and one of the things I really want to focus on on a diocesan level is our college Catholic campus ministry and really start to walk with people. Here in, 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 at Shawnee, it's a little bit more of a challenge because it's largely a commuter school. So that doesn't mean you don't do it, it means you need a different model. And, um, you know, I can see street evangelization, I can see whether it be lay movements or religious movements. Let's, let's dream and let's explore and let's exchange ideas because that, I think, is really the church on fire. One of the things Pope Francis says very often, and part of it we've experienced in a tragic way during this COVID crisis, but a, a, a blessing that's come out of it. Pope Francis talks about the doors of the church and the steps of the church. Now, Pope, I grew up in the era of, of Pope St. John Paul II. He was one of my major in, in inspirations when I was a teen, all through my early years as a priest. He used to talk about when he, from the first time he was elected, he, he said, open wide the doors, do not be afraid, open wide the doors to Christ. And he was saying, open wide the doors of your heart, of your church, and let the Holy Spirit in, let Christ in. Now, Pope Francis has taken the same image, but he's using it in a new way. 
He says, open wide the doors of the church and go on, get out of here. <laughs> In other words, he's saying, it's nice. Actually, this is what he says. It's nice to, and this was a big movement in the church, to stand at the doors of the church, to stand on the steps of the church, to welcome people, to say, hey, you're welcome here. We're glad you're here today. And that's important and that's good. But Pope Francis says even more important than that is that we move out from the um, doors of the church and, and go out into the neighborhoods and go out to people and set the world on fire with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's, that's the exciting part of this. I know there's a painful part of this, but there's also an exciting part in this because I think we have some real potential if we start to focus our energies on things like that. Um, I steal a line that I just got tonight from the tenants. It, during this COVID process, we ended up having to be the church instead of just going to the church. So I give you credit, credit where credit's due. But be the church instead of going to the church. One of the things that happened because of COVID, and it was, I don't, there's, I see nothing good in it except that God always uses these things to bless our lives, is that, I'll use this as an example. This, um, Scioto County, some of the things you have done here with the live streaming of adoration and of the Mass. Um, some of the things that you have done in terms of the cooking show. What you've been doing during these last months is you've been leaving the, door, the steps and going out to where people are and where they're living. That's a good thing. That's a really good thing. And this process, again, while there's pain, there's also some real powerful potential. And in that, in that sense of evangelization and excitement, we're also going to be building up vocations. And with the example of good vocations that have come out of here, that will inspire other people. And so, um, so, so, so we just keep at it and keep at it, and we do it with that sense of joy and confidence. How do you see the school as a part of this move for evangelization bringing uh, our schools together? There's a question, and I know that um, certainly our principals here this evening could better answer it. Uh, the percentage of uh, Catholics um, in, our, in our grade school, in our high school, uh, but uh, which is probably around 50% um, non Catholic, which is Catholic. It's very close there. Uh, but how do you see the school as uh, doing a school? Well, the school itself, I'll say a word, but I'm going to push it back to you, Father Joe, because you can be more specific about the schools here. Um, the schools themselves, I think, are sort of one of the common ground things that we have with each other. That no matter, I, I, I've met uh, people from all over now the county who are lifelong members who grew up here and then have raised their families here and they come from, you you come from different parishes but a number of you have said and I went to school right here and I went to school right here so this school the schools really are a unifying thing because they don't belong to one particular parish the schools don't belong to one particular parish. The schools are really the work of all of us together and they're for all of us and for our children and our grandchildren and their, um, their, their opportunities for us in terms of evangelization. Certainly because in years past, uh, students and families, uh, our, our RCIA program has been filled with uh, students and families who have encountered Christ Kids, um, who, I, who I would never 
But as parents, we wouldn't be uh, incorporated into the family. And he said, this is not true at all. He goes, at every event that I go to, um, someone's inviting us out to dinner. Someone's inviting us over to their house. Someone's inviting us to, to take that next step uh, of commitment into the, into the Notre Dame family. And he goes, uh, I, I never even had thought about even becoming Catholic before until I sent uh, my students to Notre Dame. He goes, I'm not there yet. Yes, indeed, and whether people become, choose to embrace the faith or not, love it when somebody chooses to embrace the faith, but they have a positive experience of who we are, and they experience the way that the gospel transforms our lives, and that's really very good in the world. The world needs that witness. The world so desperately needs the witness of the Catholic faith, whether it's one chooses to embrace it or not, but even among Catholics, even among Catholics, the school, schools do give a chance for that, that greater depth kind of evangelization. Um, so, yes. I think that you've asked some really important questions. And I know, again, that the transition team is here and listening. And this is like a, is sort of a jumping off point, you know? Our journey has taken us to this moment here, um, Scioto County in 2020. And now, as we, from this meeting here, this being together, one of the things that's so important and one of the arts that I think has been so lost especially in these weeks, is the art of listening deeply to one another. And you've just exhibited that in such a powerful way to me and helped me, I hope, to be a better listener. And I think, like I said, this is just a jumping off point. It continues the conversation, the process that's been underway, but it begins a whole new set of, of of conversations as we brainstorm together. The questions you asked, I think, are exactly the right questions that will lead us into a very productive process, into a very productive ongoing conversation, and that I think will help us to encounter Jesus Christ and bring him to others. You know, today, and, and, and Pope Francis raised this to a, a, a a feast, not just a memorial. Today's the feast of Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is the first witness to the resurrection. She showed up at the tomb on Sunday morning with some of the other women. She was the first with the other women to see the empty tomb and to tell the apostles about it. But not only that, after they all went home, she stayed around and she encountered Jesus Christ. And when she encountered Jesus Christ, she couldn't help but share him, this good news about him, with the others. And that's what I sense here in Scioto County. That's what I sense in your spirit and in the spirit of the questions. Um, I can't begin to tell you how impressed I am with the, uh, the questions that have been raised, because this is really a forward thinking, committed to working together and being on fire with the gospel. It looks like we might have some more questions. Hello, Bishop. I'm reading a letter from my sister Cecilia. She's the um, She's a book you know, for St. Martin's St. Peter. She's the secretary. She does a lot of different things. But anyway, she's in Alaska. And she sent me this uh, text message for me to read. And, and I'm going to say, even though I'm not able to be here tonight, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before I, I respond, was there another question over that way, Father Joe? Yeah, there, there was another question concerning uh, the Hispanic community. Uh, I'm sorry? The Hispanic community. Okay. Right, so we have, uh, for many of you who don't know, So I'll start, with the, I'll start there and come back to you. Thank you, by the way. Um, starting there, a couple of things about the Hispanic community, and actually, jo Father Joe, you probably can say this more accurately or concisely than I. The, th that is something that's a, a, a concern of ours, and we are going to continue to work with the Hispanic community here in Scioto County. Based on what Father Joe has experienced by interacting with the families, we're moving it's like balancing things out. We're moving from once a month to every week, but from only in Spanish to bilingual. So that the hope is that this can be, a, um, a, first of all, always available and steady to people, but also is an experience like everybody else is having of the wider church. Would that say that accurately? And in terms of religious communities and things like that, yes. That those, all these things are possibilities. Now, can we pull it off? I don't know. And whether it be through Hispanic ministry or other kinds of ministries that respond to some of the needs that are here, you know, there, yes, we have to look at everything and evaluate everything. And, and so I'm counting on that. Just a word about the missionary, the lay missionaries of the word. Uh, Yes, they did pull out, actually, uh, almost all of their ministries here last year because of uh, their needs, but they've expanded now. They are going to, they, they always did their training in California, and now they're opening up a second place for training here in Columbus. And so hopefully that means that we'll have new lay missionaries available if that's something that serves this community. And going back to um, the comments that you transmitted to us all the way from Alaska. <laughs> Thank you for that. And I want to say something. There are two very important pieces to that. I want to thank, what was the lady's name? Read? Cecilia. Cecilia. I want to thank Cecilia. And I want to thank you also for sharing um, the, the sentiments. We have to honor those feelings and the sense of loss. I can't, you know, I don't want, I'm, I, I'm afraid maybe I'm o o overstating the excitement that's here. I want to say that I have every, um, uh, that I, it's all genuine. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. But I want to make sure you know I honor it. I understand it. You will hear it. We need to hear that from each other. There is that sense of loss in, in a number of ways. And... And, and, and again, going through what we went through the last um, four months with COVID, a lot of our lives have been dismantled in so many ways. And so I think we need to honor that, and, and I need to honor that, and I, I certainly do. But I really appreciate the totality of the, of the comment, that what we are doing is something new. And out of these losses comes new life. And the new life is not in some imaginary way, but it springs forth from real people, from living people, from faithful people. And so um, I, I don't want to give the impression that I don't hear that part of it, the sense of pain and the sense of loss. I do hear that, but I also, um, share with you that hope and excitement. Father John?
Anything else? Well, I appreciate your opportunity to come out um, and uh, join us this evening. Uh, this certainly has been an opportunity for a beginning as, as Bishop uh, has continued to talk about uh, the transition team. If actually, you know, the, everyone is asking online, who's the transition team? So if you could come up here and join me um, and please stand behind me so people can see your faces. I'm gonna ask you to take off your mask when you come up here, um, just so people can see your face. Uh, we can hide behind our masks, uh, but let us take an opportunity. Um... Right, so you'll, you'll be able to see, um, you'll need to come in because we don't have a very wide angle on that lens. So uh, please stand up here and join me. We'll do our best here with Paul. Mask off, please, yes, so everybody can see. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll, I'll invite you to, uh, to please come up and state your name, too, uh, as, you're, as you're coming into the picture. Um, but this is uh, a team uh, that is uh, very collaborative. I've worked with uh, many of them uh, over the last 11 years that I have been here um, in Scioto County. 11 years, I can, I can hardly believe it. Uh, it's, it seems like I just moved here um, uh, last summer. It, it really uh, has flown by in, in, in many ways um, and I'm probably only the only priest in 11 years who served at nine parishes <laughs> I, I have I've had I have had nine parishes in the last um, uh, in the last five of my of my 11 years here uh, going all the way to Jackson and Wellston so uh, this this team has been chosen uh, by me as people are asking where do they come from they're people who sit next to you uh, day after day and week after week in the pew they're people who have uh, certainly uh, shown themselves to be very powerful uh, in the way that they work with all of you uh, that they are connected to all of you um, and so we will continue to work together um, here in the community so this is this is the first of many listening sessions um, to happen uh, this one just happens to be uh, with Bishop Brennan um, as we we, as we move forward um, in this transition, uh, right? There's there's no book here, right? Um, we're writing the book, um, and we're setting, uh, my dear friends, we are setting the pace, uh, really, uh, ahead of what's happening in the entire diocese. Uh, so you are not alone here, um, and uh, so we are we are setting the pace uh, for moving forward. Um, we will be a, a test a test case and a test study. Um, you, you just don't find books uh, about what we're doing. You, you can't go and uh, you can read other people's experiences, uh, but we're, we're writing the manual here um, and let's do it right and let's do it together uh, because God has so many new and powerful uh, and important things uh, for us here to do together. Um, we can stand in the concrete and we can get stuck where we're at and we can get left behind. Uh, or we can continue moving as one family. We know what happens when a family becomes disjointed, it becomes dysfunctional. I'm inviting all of us here this evening and moving forward to be united together so that we're not the dysfunctional family, but that we're a family uh, who loves with open arms across all seven communities here in Scioto County because now we are Scioto Catholic. There's no turning away from that. There's no turning away from whom we are. And the beauty of the church is that it's universal and that she speaks to every single one of us in this room and every single one of us who are watching online uh, this evening on our live stream. We have to do it together. And I trust that you will help me. And I trust that these men and women who are standing behind me will help me in moving forward so that we can be the family who grows, who encounters, and who witnesses. As I've said many, many, many times before, look who are the people who are most influential in our county. Where do they come from? They come from the Catholic community. We are very small here in Scioto County, but we are very powerful and we are very mighty. We have been hit over and over again in so many different ways. And yet, we have always come out triumphant. This is an opportunity for us to show our stick to together as a family of Scioto Catholic. 
and I look forward to leading uh, the community here and being your father and being your pastor as we move forward in this transition. So now I'd like to take the opportunity for the transition team to please introduce themselves. I'm Deacon Jim Sturgeon. I don't know why I'm taking this off. But <laughs> Barb Burke, uh, formerly of the West Side, now um, we live in Portsmouth. William Burke, longtime member at Our Lady of Sorrows. Jordan Waring, I'm the Consortium Director of Sacred Music. Rita Fry, um, a longtime member since 1976 uh, at Our Lady of Lourdes Parish, uh, looking forward to doing something good for the whole county and, and for all of us here. Barb Glockner, and I'm Scioto Catholic. <laughs> Shauna Queen, St. Mary's. I'm a Eucharistic minister and a PSR teacher. And Andy Glockner. <laughs> Stephanie McClure from St. Peter's. Doug McClure, St. Peter's. Deacon Chris Kelly, and I would like to say that uh, I have 33 years experience of hearing complaints at work, and I deal with them pretty well, and 15 years of ordination of hearing complaints. So if somebody needs a complaint, I'll be glad to hear it, and I'll probably give you a hug if you're sad enough. Thank you. I'm Deacon Terry Acox. Megan Baum, Director of Evangelization for Scioto Catholic. Father Patrick. Amy Miller, St. Peter. Mark Miller, St. Peter's. Barbara McKenzie, Director of Catholic Social Services and St. Francis Catholic Outreach Center. <laughs> Kathy Graham, Holy Redeemer Branch of Scioto Catholic. John Graham, Holy Redeemer, Scioto Catholic. J.D. McKenzie, Notre Dame High School Principal. Michelle Ashley, St. Monica, and Notre Dame Elementary Principal. Kevin and Teresa Metzler, St. Monica. Ethan Berger, Youth Minister, First Sayota Catholic. Chuck Detweiler, uh, Lady Lords Parish, and life lifelong member of the West Side. Okay, so there is, there's our transition team. We certainly have a lot of work ahead, so uh, what, a, what a beautiful gift to be able to gather here this evening. And Bishop, uh, I would like you to close us with prayer, if you would, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. What God has... Mary Magdalene encountered your son at the tomb on that first Easter Sunday morning. Fill us with that same hope and joy in the encounter with Jesus Christ. And as she proclaimed him to the apostles, so let us bear witness to your word in all that we say and all that we do. And help us to be instruments of the healing and strengthening and inspiring power of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen for us. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless all of you and all your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all again for being here.
Thank you, everyone, and thank you for your